My name is Loie Lane, and I'm so excited to tell you guys about my new podcast, Internet Urban Legends, with my BFF, Snitchery. We deep dive into the darkest corners of the internet to uncover whether some of the most notorious web myths are hoax or whether they're con. Internet Urban Legends, available exclusively on Spotify. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Hi, hello, my name is Loie. I can't explain to you why, but today I feel like I'm like stuck in an old beauty guru YouTube video, my own included. Like, it's the pink striped wall, it's the subpar lighting. I'm staying in Nashville right now, which is why obviously things are a little bit changed up. I am here for a few days that I'm driving down to my mom's wedding in Atlanta. So I'm staying on my own in Nashville, and as I feel like I typically do, I scared myself into not being able to sleep pretty much at all last night. Like slept for a couple of hours, woke up at 3 a.m. and was just like, nope, I'm not going back to bed. And that's because there has been a plethora of the thing that scares me the most in the world on TikTok. And as you guys always do, I've gotten a million tags from you in these videos and I can't stop myself from watching them. Before we get into it, today's video is in fact sponsored so kindly by Glamnetic. A lot of people have complimented that my makeup looks better or different recently and honestly the only thing that I changed is I am now using the best lashes in the world. These are Glamnetic Magnetic Lashes and I'm telling you, I was skeptical. I was, okay? I was skeptical at first, and now I'll never go back. As you probably already guessed, Glamnetic Lashes are magnetic lashes, but they're not just any magnetic lashes. They are the best in the game, and that comes from yours truly, who since I started using them, simply hasn't stopped. Today I'm actually wearing the pair Shameless, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like to apply these. I have been wearing them for about a week and a half, uh, just straight. The holidays are here at last, and so are the deals. I'm so excited to share this product with you, and also say that there's a lot of amazing deals from Glamnetic right now. For all of you guys, Glamnetic is giving us access to their biggest sale of the year early. And it's just in time for the holidays. So if you guys want to use my code, which will be on screen right now, as well as shop my link down below, you can get a huge discount on these lashes, which wear up to 60 times. That's bananas. I've never heard of lashes wearing that many times, but I'm telling you, even a week and a half into wearing my shameless pair, I totally can see it. The magnets really don't lose their strength. Applying the lashes is really easy. You start off with the Glamnetic Magnetic Liquid Eyeliner. This is a really opaque, nice liquid liner that glides on super smoothly, and then you get your Glamnetic Lashes. These have six magnets which adhere easily to any eye shape, and you can really use them to sort of contort your lash to your your perfect lash line. Pop on the lashes when the liner is about 80% dry. Then you can use the provided Glamnetic anchors, which just go right under your natural lash line and help to secure the lash in place in any sort of trickier spots. Think like your inner corner, your outer corner, etc. These lashes are trimmable, comfortable, stay on all day, and are mess and glue free. These make amazing stocking stuffers for you, for your best friend, for your sister, for anyone in your life really who wants to wear lashes. So once again, Use my code on screen right now and shop the link in my description box down below to get early access to Glamnetic's biggest sale of the year, just in time for the holidays. Thanks so much to Glamnetic for sponsoring today's video, and let's get back into the story. Today I'm going to be talking about the Skinwalker hashtag on TikTok. Skinwalkers in general, which I can't even believe I'm saying that word, I'm going to refer to them more as mimics throughout the video because it does make me genuinely uncomfortable to say that word, both because uh, Skinwalkers, mimics, they do come from indigenous cultures and I don't want to say that like these TikTok videos necessarily represent what this legend, what this creature is. And I also as a non-native person don't feel like I'm fully equipped to definitively sit here and tell you yeah this is totally a skinwalker. So from here on I'll be referring to these things in the video as mimics and giving you my best understanding of what they are, how they started going really viral over on TikTok, and also why they scare me, I think more than anything else I've ever talked about on this channel. A mimic is a supposed creature that can mimic another animal, a person, etc. You call them in by talking about them. So by saying their name, or in some cases, whistling at night, there are other ways to call in these creatures or invite them to yourself. Sometimes just you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. I've had my own experiences with mimics. I've talked about uh, experiences my family has had with them before on this channel. Specifically when my dad was still alive, my brother and my father would see each other in the house uh, basically just walking through and each of them 
were never actually there. It's like they were actually upstairs or they'd walk by a minute later and their pathing didn't make any sense or my brother would see my dad doing like sit-ups upstairs and then go downstairs and see him walking out the front door two seconds later and just things that didn't make any sense. I'll go ahead and tell my stories now as well just so you're not like left in suspense before I get into the TikToks. I honestly think that I've had two separate mimic experiences. The first one being when I lived in this really haunted farmhouse in deep rural Georgia. Actually, both of these experiences happened there, one in the house, one outside of it. If you're really familiar with my channel, you may have heard this first story before, but basically my brother and I, when we lived in this really rural farmhouse in Georgia, um, the, the land that this house was on, we were renting, was not ideal we were like on top of a collapsed mine uh about a tenth of a mile away there had been a uh, native burial ground that had been disrupted due to people like building on top of it and just development and stuff across the street was a really 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 old cemetery and so it just was kind of not great vibes all around. So my brother and I's rooms are directly across the hall from each other and at the exact same time we both hear our dad scream our names from his bedroom across the house. We both run into the hallway, look at each other, run to my dad's room where he's just laying on the bed with a newspaper and he just looks at us and he's like what? And I said I heard you yell my name and my brother says no I heard you yell my name and our names are not that similar. So it was very, very, very odd. And my dad thought we were like pranking him. He didn't take it too seriously, but my brother and I were really rattled by it. And that was the first experience that now I look back on. And I think that was probably a mimic. Now, the other one that I had, I did not realize until really recently when I was retelling the story on my podcast that this is probably like a mimic story to a T. My family and I would go on a lot of walks when we lived in this area. And one day we were actually walking a little bit differently than our normal pathing. Um, usually we'd stay on the paved roads, but there was this kind of like dirt path that led up into this really small mountain. I don't know if you can even call it a mountain. Is it a hill? I don't know. Basically it was like a very small hike. I wanna say as I'm about to tell this, there is a dog just barking and it does not bode well for me. I was at the time training for cross country, so I would kind of run ahead of everyone else. Uh, they were just walking and, you know, hanging out, maybe like lightly jogging, but I would like run, then run back. So I was never too far away from my family. I was like 16 at the time. They didn't want me like barreling through the woods on my own, but I was running ahead. I would go probably about a half a mile, come back, do it again. And at one point when I was pretty far ahead of my family, I saw, and I've, I've said this story so many times and never put two and two together of what this probably was, but I saw what looked like a wolf or like a really big dog, but it was like as tall as a deer. It was humongous, just like a comically large creature. I think back on it and it's funny how big it was. In my mind's eye, it looks like the CGI wolves from Twilight. This massive creature runs across the road, maybe about like a few hundred feet in front of me. Its feet weren't actually like touching the ground as it ran. It just like hopped, literally hopped over the road. And I remember like I just slowly stopped running. I stared. It never looked at me, never acknowledged me. It just ran across the road into the woods. And I turned around, went back to my family and I was like, I think there's a wolf. I don't know. They all thought that I imagined it or that I was just making up how big the creature was and just how strange it looked to me. I saw it. I mean, just clear as day. Mimics have had a resurgence, especially on TikTok with the story of Marissa Ryan Stan 69, who posted a series of TikToks that have all now been deleted. I would have kept up with this uh, entire account a lot more firmly had I realized they were gonna be taken down. I saw these a few weeks ago, I wanna say, but everything is gone now and the poster has never really followed up on what happened as far as I understand. In these videos, the poster hears what sounds like themselves calling them from a different room. Come here, come here, come here. Come here. Come here. I told you. Come here. 
It's absolutely chilling to hear this and reminds me a lot of the Mandela catalog alternates that we've talked about previously. Those are of course fictional characters, whereas the legend of the mimic is something that is very real. Not to say that these TikToks absolutely have to be real, but whether they are or not, it sends a really, really chilling feeling throughout my entire body. In the following video, the poster hears what sounds like scratching and scraping from outside of the door, saying that their pets don't make noises like this. Okay, I don't know what you're doing. You can literally hear it. The final TikTok that I had saved from this account before everything was deleted was one where they just kind of lightly explained that nothing like this had ever happened to them before and they desperately needed an expert's help. Okay, for anybody asking, this is my family home. I grew up here and we've never had a single experience like this. I, I don't know what is going on. I just need somebody who knows what this is. Please reach out. I don't care if it's in a comment or privately, just please reach out and please just help me. Since this has been posted, people have had a ton of theories about what it could be, but in particular saying that it could be a mimic of sorts, one of these creatures pretending to be him, to lure him into a false sense of security and follow whatever it is to a different room. These TikToks, I think, scared me more than anything else on TikTok ever has before. It's very likely that this is some sort of publicity stunt, that it was faked, very much so like an easy thing to fake, but it doesn't change that I think that the idea of this is what scares me most. Not being able to trust your own reality, not being able to trust that it's really your mom calling for you from the other room, or hearing your own voice in the middle of the night, having to question your own reality and your own sanity like that, I think scares me more than anything else ever has. But all that to say, this is not the only circumstance of mimics on TikTok for sure. This hashtag is littered with people telling stories, making skits, things like that. But I'm really gonna be focusing on what I feel to be true. When I started off with those first three TikToks, I do recognize that especially since the poster has like disappeared, there is a strong likelihood that they were not real. But there's something about them that, not to be punny, crawls right under my skin. Next up, we have a TikTok from WV Paranormal, who has posted several times about what they believe to be mimics on their account. The first video being this one, where the poster says they know that no one is ever gonna believe them when they show this video. And off in the distance, you can hear what sounds like something screaming. Oh my God, nobody is gonna ever believe this. All right, we're going, we're going back inside. To me, that could be some kind of animal. It doesn't sound that humanoid to me, nor like something trying to pretend to be human. But then I saw this video, and this one makes me feel a lot less certain that I know what was screaming in the woods. I'm gonna zoom in on this clip, so it's not gonna be like the rest of the TikToks where there's like the black borders and stuff, because there's really only one area of the video that you need to look at. As the poster calls in their kids, saying it's time for a bath, they slowly pan over to the woods and you can see something duck its head behind a tree. All right, guys, I think it's time to go in and get ready for a bath. Okay? I literally cannot even imagine how much that would scare me if I had kids. It scares me as someone who just has a bunch of dogs that I really don't want any mysterious creature to screw with. But those were weird to say the least. However, things really take a ramp up a notch. In this video from Livid Linguini. Linguini? Linguini. God, I want pasta. At first I thought this video was 
an overreaction to seeing someone on the side of the road. And I'm going to let you see the first part now. What the f Stop. No, Stop. I'm not. I'm not. No. No. What the f No. Oh. They were soaked. Oh. Oh. There she is. There she is. There she is. Bro, what the f See? That was it. That was it. She's crying. The poster and the people in the car end up circling back around where they see this person on the ground again. And once again, they refuse to stop. However, in daylight, they catch something really interesting on camera. Yep, she had to have come up out of the water. Yep, there's a dig spot there. So she came up from down there. That's had to have been why she was so wet. This was the spot that she had left. I don't know why or what was going on. If we're understanding correctly, it looks like this woman literally crawled out of the lake and like left a massive wet spot just right there on the road. Like that is the scariest thing I have ever seen in my life. I really don't know how anyone can watch these videos and walk away not absolutely petrified by them. Tokyo Japan actually posted, um, a, I guess sort of a viral clip of this one supposed mimic experience. And I'm gonna skip over his first part where he sort of talks about mimics in general um, and says that this is like definitely footage of them. In this video, you can see that the person screaming help me is standing so calmly, backlit by this beautiful, it, it gives me tears in my eyes, backlit by this beautiful sunset, just looking like a full-blown creep, looking like a full-blown creep, baby. There's also just something about the way that it walks at the end, the way that it starts to come towards the camera. It looks so not human and so uncanny valley. Maybe that's why mimics are so scary because it is that uncanny valley-ness of it all. They're not quite right. They're trying to mimic what we find familiar. Now I said I'd be focusing on the ones that are real, but I did realize after saving this video from Follow Pete and Ash that this account is fictional and actually I think gearing up for a movie that the two are working on together. However, it doesn't take away that so many of these mimic experiences are just like this one. And even though this one is fictional that we're kind of ending off the video on, I still think it's terrifying nonetheless. Dude. Oh my god, no, f that. So there you guys have it. That was a full video on the one thing that scares me most while I am staying out in the rural Nashville forest, basically, by myself. It is absolutely freezing. There is a dog across the street just barking away at absolutely nothing. I don't know why I did this to myself. I really don't. I really wanna know if you guys find mimics as terrifying as I do. If you're really into paranormal stuff, like do you believe in them? Do you think that they're real? Have you ever had an experience that you feel willing to share? Let me know in the comments down below. I love reading everything you guys have to say. I want to say a special thank you to my subscriber Mel for being a member of this channel. If you guys want to join my channel memberships, get one extra exclusive members only vid every single month, although we're a little bit behind at this moment in time. I'm planning on catching up after this wedding, which being the maid of honor in a wedding at your mother's wedding, no one ever told me that it was going to be like a second job. But seriously, if you ever wanna become a member of this channel and support me in that way, I really do appreciate it. You should hit that little join button somewhere around here. We would love to have you. For now, thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I love you very, very much, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.